call from. Hello? Hi, Lyle. I didn't think I'd get through again. Why didn't you think you would get through? Uh, because I was um, on a call maybe like a few or two weeks ago or something. Oh. Um, thank you for putting the kaleidoscope background. I of course. love it. I am. It's because I love it so much right now because I just had an edible. Don't die. Oh, some people have died on edibles. What? Like, you mean like laced edibles? I care about your safety. What? Just stay safe. Pay attention to the I dosage. Know. Pay attention to what's in what you're eating, what you're putting in your body. I know. Okay, good. I'm good. I, I care about it. you. It's, I care about your well-being. I don't want you to get laced with cocaine you. or something. No, no, no. I got their like, you buy it medical off? Did one. Did you buy it underneath a uh, bridge? Or did you buy it at a no. store like you would my, a, a, an apple? <laughs> my boyfriend got it from one of his coworkers whose boyfriend is a drug dealer. All right. I don't try. Right, I don't trust that. Class. You should go to the hospital immediately. No, no, no. They were like in, like in an official package. Pro- what's, oh, I'm sorry. Everything. What's your name? What's your name? Grace. Grace, will you promise me that you will go to the hospital immediately after this call? No. I can't be liable for this, Grace. She said, I got it from a safe place. I got it from my boyfriend's coworker. Go to the hospital, Grace. I could hear you convulsing over the phone. I could tell that you needed medical attention. Therapy Kit goes on the line. Taking your phone calls every night. Therapy Kit goes to an right. Teaching you how to live your life. But he's not really an expert. Call from Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Hey, what's up? Is this the country of Saudi Arabia? Are you calling from I mean, Saudi Arabia? Not the government. I'm just a normal citizen. Do you really? Do you really live in Saudi Arabia? Yeah. Uh, you probably doubt it because of my accent. Well, no lack of accent, but it's because uh, I've lived in the U.S. before. No, I don't doubt it because of your lack of the accent. I doubt it because um, I, I, you know, generally the have had you know, the not the phone number. The not that I doubt it, but I, I am surprised by it because of the phone number and because of the fact that people who live in other countries have generally had a hard time calling into this stream for whatever reason. The, the way that Google Voice works. Uh, I'm just using an app that gives you a false U.S. number, so I can call. Oh. Nice. <laughs> How's it going in Saudi Arabia? Anything uh, cool? Pretty happening? nice. Uh, it, it's 4.40 uh, a.m. People here are fasting because of uh, Ramadan. Nice. Are you oh, fasting? as well, though. I am fasting. Why do people fast for Ramadan? Like, what is the... I don't know. Any, I don't really know anything about Ramadan. Well... Uh, Ramadan is like a whole month where Muslims fast and by fasting we don't uh, eat or drink but we also uh, refrain from sinning maybe like saying bad words doing bad acts interesting so it's basically uh, a full day uh, dedicated to worshipping God now let me ask you something you're abstaining from sin for this brief window of time but you know yeah the other 364 days of the year, do you consider yourself in general to be much of a sinner? Uh, yeah, uh, to be honest, yeah, I'm not going to lie and say that I'm perfect, but uh, I do sin, but I do also ask God for forgiveness all the time. Hmm. What have been some of your some of your sins? Uh, m- masturbation, uh, looking at porn. Stuff like that. Can I ask you something? And look, you know, I'm not trying to get in deep into your head or anything. You know, I'm not a real therapist. I'm just a guy on the computer. But when you look at, <laughs> you know, when you when you yourself, outside of the lens of of your religion, uh, and maybe in a more objective sense, 
look at the act of masturbating, look at the act of looking at porn. Do you? I'm not, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer, so I'm not trying to steer you anyway, but what do you actually think about those acts and whether or not they are immoral? Well, I think, uh, I do believe that, um, personally, that porn and masturbation may have, uh, detriments on one's personal, uh, life, like on marriage or, uh, or it may also affect the social structure of society. Mm -hmm. However, I don't believe that all masturbation is bad because in Islam, if you believe that by masturbating, you are putting an end your desires for example to look at porn if you masturbate will you stop looking at porn then go ahead and masturbate so you can stop mm. sinning interesting why do you believe that it's detrimental to society um i feel like if you keep for example if we're still talking about porn yes. uh if you're married and you keep on looking at porn your wife may not uh, maybe you'll want more, if you know what I mean. You'll sure. have uh, more desires for things that are beyond your reach. So mm. it might, uh, yeah, it might unravel this, your marriage and it'll uh, indirectly affect society as a whole. When you say it'll make you desire things that are outside of your reach... Is desire for things outside of your reach in general, like desire for grandiosity or like desire for extreme wealth or anything like that, considered considered a sin? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, it's just uh, if you desire reasonable things, it, it's not an issue. But when you're when you're looking at uh, Porn, you may desire uh, more than what you have, and that may affect your wife, for example, or kids. You may want to abandon them and seek uh, seek uh, your pleasure from somewhere else, and that will uh, no doubt affect them, in my belief. Mm. You know, I'm pleased to hear that, you know, it sounds like you are abstaining from these things because of a legitimate belief that you have in the negative ways that they might affect your personal life as opposed to Indeed. just some like sort of abstract fear. Yeah, yeah. I like to uh, understand uh, or try to make reason of what I believe in. And I feel like uh, everything has a reason if you look uh, deeply into it. And I also uh, don't condone like blind belief. So if someone tells you to not do something, I believe you have a right to know why you shouldn't do that thing. And if it's reasonable enough, then yes, absolutely don't do it. So have you quit masturbating altogether or just not excessively or just not for this small period of time? Yeah, I try to... Uh, uh, refrain from it uh, as much as possible. I mean, sometimes I do uh, slip between the cracks, but I do get back to where I was quickly. Mm. Well, I bet it's kind of cool because if you go a long time without masturbating and then you do masturbate, <laughs> it feels a lot better. I, I mean, it does. It, <laughs> it does, but it's it's also not like if you stop masturbating altogether, uh, it'll affect your health or anything. Uh, P, uh, I I believe that uh, wet dreams are are kind of uh, a way for your body to, to release itself, but more naturally. Are you saying Instead our dreams are made physically. of cum? <laughs> I mean, if you want to put it that way, maybe. That's actually kind of nice. <laughs> what did you say your name was? Uh, I, I, or I'd you probably can get a fake name if you not want. to mention my name. Uh, but you, you can just call me Poke. It was a pleasure talking with you, Poke. You have a wonderful rest of the evening and a wonderful rest of Ramadan. Thank you so much, uh, you two and all viewers. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Oh.
from? Jack. Jack! Yo, what's up, Jacko? Jack me nimble, jack me quick. Jack Flash sat on a candlestick, cuz fire is the devil's only friend. And what? Fuck, what comes after that? I don't know, but I'm really enjoying that. That's beautiful. Wow, the king. That's not. I know that's in the song, but that's not something after that. What did you eat today? What song is it? What did I eat today? Ah, oh, my head steak. It's pretty it's good. good. Did you cook it? Yeah, or did you buy it from somewhere. No, nah, my dad cooked it. So mm. pretty much bought it. Do you live with someone. your dad? Hmm? Do you live with your dad? Yeah. Well, how old are you? I'm 25 right now. Okay, word. Does your What's your relationship like with your dad? Uh, we get along pretty well. Can't complain. I respect the guy. Why do you respect him? What do you respect him for? Uh, pretty hardworking dude. Um... And he definitely like cares about family and shit, so that's pretty cool. Nice. But yeah. What does he What does he do to work for work? Um, he fixes elevators. Mm. Um, do you have you picked up any elevator knowledge from him? No, no, no. I work at a high school. I do not work. That is not my forte. Mm. What do you What do you do at a high school? I'm like a teacher assistant. Teacher assistant, do you enjoy doing that? Are you in? Are you in person or are you still on the virtual? So actually, we start in person tomorrow, so that should be fun. How do you feel about the impending uh, transition from virtual to now? Is this what? Okay, is this a new gig? Like, have you? Ever no, 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 no. this is my before? second year. Yeah, yeah okay. My second All right, year. so you have experience teaching in person. You can just start the job on the yeah. virtual. I'm actually excited because online is pretty boring, or like the hybrid model. You don't get to know the kids as well. Right, right. What made you want to get into that initially? Um, that's a great question. I'm just, I've always been good with people. So I just wanted to do like a, something pertaining to people. So I tried politics for a while, worked at the state house. Didn't really like that, but, um, I'm not 36, by the way, 25. But, um, (laughs) I, yeah, just decided to go into schools, wanted to, Make a difference, I guess. Do something worthwhile that I don't hate. I like that. Were you doing something you hated before? Right, you're working politics. Did you did you hate that, would you say? Mm, no, no, no. I shouldn't say I hated that, but a lot of bullshit. It's the best way I can put it. What's your favorite thing about what you do now? Um, it's never boring. I don't, I don't hate boring. waking up and going to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, that's surprising to me that you say it's never boring because I, and I'm sure you as well, went to high school. And, yeah. um, I mean, I, sure, I look at it fondly with rose colored glasses, but I know deep down, w- w- uh, you know, at the time, every single day, I was like, wow, this is the most boring thing of all time. I can't wait to get out of here. <clears throat> I, I guess it's different when you're getting paid. <laughs> yeah, so do I you guess feel like your experience different. so what I guess what, the, the what I'm getting at is like I, I'm curious what your experience with high with high school and your view of high school is as a staff how that uh, contrasts I with do. maybe what your view was uh, as a student and you're 25 yeah. so you're, I feel like you're young enough to still kind of remember yeah um no I was definitely more bored as a student. I, w- I was not a very good student at all, actually. But I feel like um, now it's like I'm always doing something, and I always like because when you're a student, it's just you. But now it's like I might have five different kids all in there, and I'm like, oh, I gotta make sure they're doing their work and not doing something stupid. Mm. Do you have to do a lot of babysitting? Yeah, I won't even lie. Yeah. Does that annoy you? Um, sometimes I just want the kids to do their work. But, you know, it's like being a kid, too. And there was some days where I was like, I'm not doing it. Sometimes you can't do anything about it. That's the thing. Sometimes you're not going to win. Mm. You know, that's an interesting position to be in because, you know, when you're in um, – because I remember being in high school and, like, teachers getting mad and being like, what the fuck is this person so fucking mad for? Like, you know, 
Why, why, why yeah, are they getting so pissed be off? Honest, like, why are they overreacting? But I feel like you have greater empathy for that now. Yeah, it doesn't. You don't solve anything doing that. It doesn't solve a thing. The kid gets mad at you. You start getting mad, and then sometimes it turns into a pissing contest of like, "Oh, I'm in charge here." No, I'm in charge here. So, never really works out. Sometimes if a kid's not going to work, just give them some space. Because sometimes they just have you know shit going on, and you'd rather them come up and tell you like, "Hey, like, you know, this is bothering me," rather than, "Oh, is he going to be mad at me for not doing work?" So. Depends. I like that. That's a, that's a refined, uh, more empathetic approach. I, I feel like you have to be, especially in schools nowadays. So many kids are like anxious with, I mean, like social media, which started becoming a big thing when I was in high school. But oh yeah, like you know, everyone like all the kids think they have to like keep up with other things. And oh my god, yeah, you know, it can be stressful being a kid. Like you look back Absolutely. at it, and it's like, you know, it doesn't seem like a big deal now, but you then it's obviously everything so you have to keep that in mind you know the social media aspect of it uh, actually scares the shit out of me like just how i mean we like we we had our fucking phones and shit when 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 we were in high school but like i mean now everything is so much more public like it used to be like if you fucked around and posted some stupid video on facebook like your facebook friends would see it but with tiktok it's like you could fuck around and post something stupid on social media it goes viral. The whole world sees it, and that scares the shit out of me. Yeah. Well, something that's really crazy, kind of like on what you're saying, is um, there's actually like a whole Instagram page with my school. And obviously, I'm going to keep that confidential, but it's like just an Instagram page about like who's like sexually harassed who and stuff. Oh, and my it's God. Like kind of crazy. Yeah, it's absolutely nuts. And you, you never realize, like, how prevalent that is until you just see hundreds of posts about it. It's nuts. Really? I have, like, a, and again, you don't have to, you know, tell me more than you're at liberty to tell me about it. Like, is that something that the, like, fal- faculty has, like, looked into? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They take it seriously. You have to. Damn. Well, listen, man. P- pro- props to you. You know, I, 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 uh, I, I appreciate what you're doing. Because I feel like I remember, you know, lots of people remember being in high school and being like, damn, I wish I had like, you know, even if it's just the even every kid, all they need is one staff member to be empathetic with them for them to like, you know, feel good about coming to school. So, you know, yeah, 100%. I appreciate the work you're doing, my friend. Hey, man. Thanks. And you, too. You're doing a pretty good job with the street. I like it. I enjoy it. What did you say your name was? Uh, Jack. You have a good rest of the night, Jack. Good luck to you. You as well, Lyle. Good night. Call from Cherry. Cherry? Cherry? Hello. Cherry with a C-H. How are you? How are you, Cherry? I'm, I'm very good, actually. Today's been a really good day. How are you doing? Really? Why has today been such a good day? Well, I I uh, went to work and my shift was really good, and uh, now I'm at home just sipping on um, some bird dog whiskey, and I think it might rain, and I'm very excited about that. I love the uh, all the all this like you're like a. If I could use a metaphor, like a, your day is a towel and you're squeezing – it's like a wet towel and you're squeezing all the the joy out of it that can possibly be squeezed. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, I'm looking at the positive side. So why uh, – tell me about your affinity for rain. Oh, uh, well, it just hasn't rained in like a week and a half here and I live in a very rainy state. So, you know, it, when it hasn't rained in a while, you can smell it and I could – smell it when I left my shift at work so it was just it was really nice to smell the rain and to see the clouds roll in and now mm. the sky is very dark and gloomy and I love that <laughs> when it rains do you like to are you you know out there running in the rain sticking your tongue out getting raindrops all over your face you know uh, uh, really basking around in it or do you like to appreciate the rain from afar I like to appreciate the rain because my bed is 
pushed up against my window. So, and there's a bunch of Ooh. like 80 foot tall trees in the backyard. And I like to sit on my bed with a cup of tea and just watch the trees sway as the wind and rain pours down. And it's just very poetic. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're being very poetic in your description about it. Oh, I love it. It's my, actually, I don't write poetry, but little short, like, blurbs like two or three sentences so uh, that's my favorite time that's really the only time i write those and it's very it's very nice it's very healing i'm glad to hear that because i was actually going to say the 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 portrait that you're painting here i i I feel like you'd be remiss not to you know get something on record of it yeah yeah it's my like the big storm where there's thunder and lightning cracking those are my favorite times to sit down and like Right. Mm. Do you do you feel as though in your day to day life you are more focused on being in the moment and being in touch with your surroundings and and what's in front of you, or you know, do you spend that much time in your head? Um, a little bit of both. So in the moment, I'm really just focused on what I'm doing. And it's at the end of the day where I like to reflect on certain situations where I remember throughout the day that have made me feel a certain type of way. And I really sit mm. and like to think about it and how it sat with me, you know? Mm. Would you would you be comfortable sharing maybe maybe even from today? Maybe if, if you might not mind letting us in on um, your reflections uh, for this evening of the day, uh, is there anything that happened today yeah. that you, you might want to reflect on? Well, it, uh, the main thing that the first thing that comes to my head is a conversation that I had with a regular named Tom. And Tom is a man I've met about four or five times, and he's a regular at my new job, and everybody knows his face and everything like that. Um, and he's moving, and he's talking about how he's lived in this house. Uh, for like 30, 40 years and moving state and he's getting more property and that type of thing. And I'm thinking about what it means to move away from something so comfortable and something so, to leave to something so new. And he was talking about trying to take his house with him. And like literally like, like take, fucking take it all down and put, how, how do you even do that? I don't know. Uh, one of my coworkers said her cousin does something like that, actually, where they like can take the foundation of the house and move physically move the house. <laughs> Interesting. So now Tom talking about uprooting his comfortable life and doing mm-hmm. something new. Did that make it you think about if you would do something similar? Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's. You know, the scary feeling definitely was reflected within me of something so new and something so bold because, you know, he's lived there for 30 years and I relate to that. I've been in the same industry for so long and uprooting myself and moving on and up in the world. Something very relatable. I think everyone can translate that to their own life. Do you have anything? Because, you know, you seem you seem like... uh... You know, and again, we don't have that much information about you from this five minute call, but you seem like you have such a, a great ability to, to appreciate the sort of things that other people might find monotonous that, you know, I mean, you could you could you could make yourself comfortable anywhere. Yeah, well, I feel like um, it comes from a place of having already being uprooted. Uh, cause I grew up in one home in one place and I moved my family away to another place. Mm-hmm. So I can appreciate where he's coming from. Cause I've already kind of been through that. I didn't move as far as he is. He's moving multiple states away, hundreds of miles. So it's not the same, but I still feel that what he's feeling. Are you comfortable where you are right now? Yeah, absolutely. I am very comfortable. I'm happy and I can appreciate it. But before we go, what is, do you think, something that might make you, if anything, that might make you want to uproot once again? What would be? Uh, 
Uh, the only thing I can think of is loss. If I was to lose something that was rooting me to the place I am right now, mm. like my job or someone in my family or something that makes me kick up and leave. Mm. Well, I hope that that doesn't happen to you, but even if it does, Thank you. you know, I, I, you know, exploration though, is great. Exactly. It seems as though you have the skills to um, adapt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Sherry, Cher- Cherry, Cherry, yes. Cherry. Cherry, it's a pleasure, pleasure speaking with you this evening. Thank you so much. You too, Lyle. By the way, I love your name. That's the name of my grandpa. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know a lot of other Lyles, except fictional ones. Yeah, no, Lyle is a great name. If I ever have kids, I'm definitely naming them Lyle. Well, thank you, Cherry. If I ever have... Uh, don't. I wouldn't know, recommend it. I got you so much. Yeah, no. I appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for yeah, your time. Have the rest of the night, Cherry. You too. Call from... It's Lisa. Uh, Lisa. Oh my God. Hey. Hey, Lyle. Gek, what are how you, are you? What, what are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm outside. It's sunny. It's a beautiful outside day. Where? I'm outside my house. I'm in Los Angeles. Do you like Los Angeles? No, I do not? not. People here, they're like, they're not people. You know, they're not so people. Of, what do you mean by that? There's a lot of plastic layers. There's a lot of guessing what people really mean. There's not a lot of, not a lot of vulnerability. There's not a lot of anything but competition. Who has a better car? Who has a nicer house? That's Los Angeles. No, thank Can you. I hear. Yes. Possibly. Yes. If you're yes, willing okay. to get specific, and you don't have to name names, you can, you know. Okay. Uh, who who is the last person, or maybe the last interaction you had with someone that sort of matches the description of plasti- plasticity that you have just described? Um, every single person I worked with. Give me but, one uh, in particular. I mean, I'm not gonna give you their name. Lyle, of course, but, give me uh, a, you know, fake I guess, name. I guess my my boss. Um, hey, my boss. I'll just say her. I don't want to be so negative, whatever. She has her reasons for being that way. But it's just like every conversation is this like petty little dance of like letting me know that I'm not whatever she thinks she is, which is very powerful. So fun, whatever. Mm. Got it. In what sort of subtle ways do you think she tries to make you feel as though you are not as powerful as her? Like reminding me she flies first class and letting me know that like she bought the new Louis Vuitton bag, like all that crap. Sorry, no, no offense to anyone in the chat. If you guys like these things, that's great. All the don't Louis lord Vuitton it. Belt don't owners lord in it the chat people. are probably very offended by you right now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Sorry, guys. Whatever. People like what they like. It's fine. But whatever. She has a reason. I shouldn't be so judgmental. Mm-hmm. Well. I don't know. I mean, do you, do you ever brag about anything? You know, I I could see how there could be times where people could interpret me bragging about something when I'm just sharing a fact about my life. Mm. You know but what? They're the, very you know different. What? I honest yeah. to God believe the di- the because I I think about this a lot actually. What yeah. is the difference between bragging and just sharing something about your life? I think the key difference, and and I, I genuinely believe, even though it's even though it's internal, it comes out externally. Yeah. The key difference is your intentions, right. and your intentions always show through. I believe. So if right. your actual intention when you say something is to share a fact about your life and not to brag, and you have to you have to like go in deep and check because you might subconsciously yeah. be trying to brag. You got to check could for also, that. It could also be you could be very secure and the yes. person you're speaking to might not be very secure and they interpret it as a slight against them, which is making yes. me realize as I'm saying this right now, I could have been doing that to her. Although I don't think so because she did it with everyone. Oh, this woman. Oh. Anyway. Shouldn't bother me. Shouldn't bother me. It's her. 
her. Yes, it could be the other person's insecure, so they're interpreting what you're saying, which is you just yeah. trying to share your life as. But you know what? I mean, all these things. I don't know. If you're truly secure, you know, I feel like I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm not even thinking about this stuff. But in LA, it's like you never really get to that level with people for the most part. It's like you're always on this like you're always at arm's length. Well, I don't know. I have experienced again, not to throw shade or be negative towards anyone in the chat who's from here who likes it. But I have experienced Los Angeles is everyone's at arm's length and it's like this whole facade that you're trying to per portray as you're this, you know, perfect whatever you think you are. And yeah. everyone needs to know. And that's just what it is. And I'm just like, I, I see through it and I don't, I'm like, but who are you? And people are like, whoa, you're not allowed. You have to see this facade, interact with the facade. Okay, fine. Fine. What have your experiences not, been like as you try to break break through this facade? <sighs> what, what reactions have you gotten? They don't. Hmm. I'm all limited to this one specific person. It's like it's like it becomes a fight. Then mm. it's just like it's like you're not a you know like you're just not allowed. You just. It, it, it's not interpreted as me trying to be friendly or a friend. It's like I'm trying to poke at the facade because maybe they mm. are aware on some level it's not real, and that frightens them. Mm. Well, you know, you can I use all I this as I, motivation. I read too much into people who don't who don't give a shit, who don't actually want. Like that's just I don't know. Have you been to LA? Have you do you know what it's like here? I've been to Los Angeles. Well, you know, it's funny because I, like I keep it? hearing the I keep hearing this about. I heard all yeah. the time in Los Angeles, like the people are fake. And look, you know, I went out there, and um, you know, honest to God, everyone I met was very nice to me. They're nice. They can be very nice. It depends, like where you are. So I worked in finance, so that was probably the problem. But it like it depends where you are in the city, and it depends, like. It depends. People people are very smiley here. That's what um, someone that I knew from New York, that was their big take on L.A. Everyone's smiling and everyone's happy. So, like, they didn't catch into the, like, yeah, but there's, like, a distance. There's a facade. There's a facade of happiness. I don't know. It's well, probably listen, all, uh, you know, it's, at it's the very least, you can use... Then. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, that's what I was going to say. You know, yeah. you know, you can use yeah. when you look at these people and you go, all right, these people act in certain ways that I'm noting down that I don't like. So when I go out into the world and I act upon people, I'm going to make sure that I do not act this way. It's true. It's true. Very true. Which your name was? Lisa. Lisa. It was a pleasure talking to you, and I hope that you know, yeah. maybe you move somewhere that you like more. I am. It's definitely in the cards. It's actually like a couple months. I am no longer here. Couple months. Couple in the months, cards. Yeah. Lisa the forever, cards. baby. Thanks, Lyle. Have a great night. Bam, bam. You too. All right. Bye. Call from Celeste. Celeste? Oh, my God. How are you, Celeste? No way. Yes. I'm great. I'm great. Oh my god, I'm so nervous now. Why are you why are you nervous? What because beyond Okay, what do you think is the wor worst thing that could possibly happen right now? I don't know. You don't like my call or something? The worst thing that could possibly happen is that I don't like you? Or like my call is like a mediocre call. I feel like that's like the <clears throat> the whole thing that I have. Well, the let me ask you something. Okay, you, you're you afraid of your call being a mediocre call, but I need to ask you, Celeste, what, in your head, what are the qualities of a mediocre call? I don't know, like, just like, oh my god, I'm so nervous. Like, don't be nervous, I don't know, Celeste. Like, <laughs> uh, like, you know, you tell them the question, they answer, they give you, like, kind of just, I don't know, like, dude. <laughs> hmm. You know, there's, there's, there's so much, you know, Celeste, I, 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 I gotta tell you, out there on the internet, out there online, out there in society, there's so much, of, of, there's so much focus on there of, um, you know, it's really hot right now. You know, it's a big uh, fad, I believe. Maybe not a fad, but uh, God, you know, it's so hot right now, Celeste, is qualitative judgments of things. 
Would you agree with that? Qualitative what? Qualitative judgments of things. This is good. This is bad. This is okay. This sucks. Yikes. Um, That was awesome. That was really cool. That was stupid. That was boring. You know, qualitative judgments about things. Very popular right now. I mean, I don't, I just feel like, I don't even know, man. I didn't expect you to pick up. (laughs) I really didn't. Mm. I didn't expect you to answer. I didn't expect you to answer. I didn't expect uh, you to get in either. (laughs) But here we are. We are two people talking to each other on the phone. What did you eat today, Celeste? What did I eat? Um, I ate a lot of things. Um, I went to work. I had a salad at work, work at a salad restaurant, um, came home, had you wings You work at up. a salad restaurant? Yes, like a salad what, bar. Okay, what kind of salad, what, what what was in this salad that you ate? Um, It's called the guacamole greens. It has mm. avocado, blackened chicken, romaine lettuce, spring, spring mix, um, onions, tomatoes, basic, basic stuff. Did you make it yourself? Yes, I did. Mm. Did you did you get now okay, did you get paid to make your own salad? I did I do not. I think you should get paid it to make your own salad clock. because you're a customer, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, when you're off the clock, you're merely a customer, right? Right. So when you're merely a customer, you shouldn't be making your own stuff. That's true. Usually we have like our other employees like make your own make the salad for you, but I feel really bad, so I just do it myself. Mm. Like, I'm not going to ask someone, that's hey, kind of weird. Like, salad. imagine if you went in, like, a, if a random person, if a customer came into your shop, right, and went behind the counter and just started making themselves a salad. I mean, that's kind of what you did. That's true, yeah. But I mean, I don't want to be rude and, like, ask my coworkers, like, hey, can you make me a salad right now? Like, I just feel bad. But is it rude? If I you never... go, but if you go into a salad store and you ask the person, hey, could you make me a salad? And if, if it's rude to do that, then why, what's the point of even having a store in the first place? Everyone that's, who's ever that's... ordered a salad at that store and had someone made it is, is, is rude. That's true. That's true. I mean, look, I would rather you just get paid to make yourself the salad because you're a customer. Right, mm-hmm. but when okay, when you're eating the salad, you're a customer. But when you're making the salad, you work there. So as you're working there, you are making. As you make the salad, you are working to make a salad for the customer. It doesn't matter that the customer is you. That's not. That's irrelevant. You're still making the salad for the customer. You should get paid for making the salad. Beauty. A lot of people they get employee you- discounts, but I, I mean, you should go. They should pay you to make the salad for yourself. You like lost me halfway, but I I I get it. Yeah, I get it. Well, it was a pleasure talking to you, Celeste. How it was a pleasure talking went? to you, dude. Um, it went pretty okay. I mean, I'm like super like jittery right now, so I'm like I'm probably stuttering a little bit, but um, and like my mind is like all over the place right now. No, you sound excellent. <laughs> Thank you. You sound, um, like a, you sound like a human being. You sound like a human being. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. You have a good rest of the night. Um, wait, can I say something? Sure. I really like your show, and I like the gig you do. You're really cool, and you're awesome. Thank you, Celeste. That's very nice. That's the one... Not... Thank you, thank you, Celeste. I appreciate that. <laughs> you're welcome. That's very sweet of you. You have a good rest of the night. You too. Bye. All right, per stream. Quick shout-out to Celeste. Very Seemed like a very sweet person. I say seemed like because I don't know her that well. I only know I, the only information I have about Celeste is the information that she revealed to me, to us in that five minute phone call. And I don't like to make qualitative judgments on people, good or bad, based on a small amount of information. That's why I say she seems like a good person. And I will say, listen, listen here, people are I, I, I per stream. People are allowed to be nice to me twice, I think. I think that's a good ruling. I think people... Uh, uh, again, appreciate Celeste.
from the information that I've gathered from her, she seems like a nice person. Again, won't make a final decision unless if I got more information, which I probably won't because I don't know her in person. And she has the right to to maintain her own privacy. I think people are allowed to be nice to me twice per stream. Any more than that? And it's like, you know, who is this guy? All from uh, Bryce and Hagen. Bryce and Hagen? Yes, Bryson Hagen. Uh, is that is that okay? Is your full name Bryson Hagen, or is your name Bryce and you're with someone named Hagen? Uh, Bryson. That's my first name. Okay, Bryce Hagen. Is, okay, so I'm talking to one person. Yes, you're just talking to one person. Am I on the speaker? Am I, am I on speakerphone right now? Yeah. Could you would you mind taking me off speakerphone? It's a little bit hard to hear you. Uh, can you hear me better now? Oh, I can hear you wonderfully. What's your full name again? Uh, Bryson Hagen. Bryson Hagen. Uh, can I ask you something? Yeah. Do you consider yourself to be a generally trusting person? Because a lot of people, they won't even give me, like, a lot of people will call in with a fake first name because they don't want to reveal their real name. But you gave me your real, what I assume to be, your yeah, real first like a, and last name. I feel like a trusting person. Trust. What do you think has allowed you to be so trusting? Uh, I don't know, I guess the way I was raised up. And how would you describe that way? I don't know. I grew up in a small community. Just understanding, knowing everyone you know. I don't know. Stuff like that. Do you still live in the small community that you grew up in? Uh, well, now I go to College Station uh, at a &M. Oh, so you go to a larger university now? Yes. And uh, is this a new thing, or how long have you been in school for? Uh, I'm actually graduating in two weeks. Oh, congratulations. What, uh, graduating with what? Uh, Bachelor's of Science in Rangeland Ecology and Management. Beautiful. So after having spent a significant portion of your life in a small community and now graduating after having spent and also a significant portion of your life, I would say four years, in a much larger community, um, what would you say is more preferable to you? A uh, smaller community for me, a hundred percent. Why is that? Uh, I like less traffic. Uh, pretty easygoing guy. I like to know pretty much everyone I see around town and everything because I like to have a conversation with just about anyone. Mm. You can have a conversation with just about anyone. You say? Yes. Mm. Do you often approach strangers on the street or talk to people when you're on the bus or in lines for things, or do you keep to yourself? Uh, a little bit of both, depending on how I feel that day. Hmm. I like that. You know, that takes a lot of confidence. Thank you. Where do you do you think? Where do you think you, now that you've graduated? Where do you think you'll move? Not you know uh, location wise, but to a you know small community or big community. A uh, small community. Well, I, I wish you good luck in doing so. You seem like you're going to fit in just well, just fine, and not even just fit in, but thrive. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think you are doing great yourself. Thank you. What do you say your name was again? Uh, Bryson Hagen. Bryson Hagen, you have a wonderful rest of the evening. Let me know what your LinkedIn is because I want to endorse you on there. Uh, I'm just find I don't it have myself and endorse you. I love you, Bryson. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Love you too. Call from Rosie. Rosie! Hey, what's up? How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm doing all right. How are you? You know what? Now I'm not all right. Why are you not all right? I don't know. Something just changed in the last, like, second. You know, I went from all right to now I'm not all right. Tell me about that. Um, I don't know. What do you, th what do you, th what yeah. do you, all right, I know you don't know what happens. You might not even have an idea of what happened, but I mean, give us your best, give me your best hypothesis, conspiracy, your best idea of what might have happened to change your mood so rapidly like this. 
I mean, maybe like I uh, intersected with like a parallel universe where I wasn't all right. And maybe it was just like the two merging mm. at, at that time. I don't know. Maybe. All right. Hold on to this. This parallel. All right. So you believe that at the beginning of this call, you were existing in a universe in which you felt all right. And then you sort of crashed, intersected with a universe in which you weren't feeling all right. And that caused you to feel less all right. Am I correct? Yeah, that's probably it. I mean, that's okay. all I can think of. Well, hold, hold that real quick. In this parallel universe that we crashed into, in which we know you don't feel all right, is there anything else different about the universe? Or is it identical to the one we started in, except for the fact that you feel less all right at this very moment? See, is it an otherwise no. identical, or is there like, or is the universe where you feel right, or do, do do we all have little tentacles on our legs instead of legs? Like what? You know, you get know what I'm saying here? Yeah, like, and I mean, I'm looking around my room because I'm laying in bed, and you know, everything looks normal. Um, but I mean, I could very well walk outside like everything's on fire right now. I don't know. I mean, we we just don't know right now. Do you hope everything is not on fire? Yeah, I, I don't think I'd want anything to be on fire. I think that probably wouldn't be a good time. That's good. That's a sign of mental stability, I believe, to not to, to be at peace with things not being on fire. Oh my god, I am not mentally stable in any way, shape, or form. But thanks, thanks for giving me you know some positive reinforcement. Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I you know, I'm, I wasn't you know making any statement on your personal mental stability. I was just <laughs> saying objectively, I believe that it. Maybe it's not a sign of mental stability, but it's it is a sign of mental instability if someone were to be obsessed with lighting things on fire. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, and yeah, that I, I would. Definitely obsession agree with is that. not present in you, which is a point. Not necessarily a point towards mental stability, but it's not a point for mental instability. Yeah, yeah, I'm picking up what you're saying. You know, I, I'd say I'd agree with all that. Are you there? Yes. Oh, okay. So, Gek, what did you eat today? What did you eat today? I had Chipotle. Oh, what exactly did you have? I had white rice and black beans. And then I got chicken, mm. and then I put stuff on it, and it was good. Well, okay, you just you just completely skipped. I mean, you know, don't don't tell us. Okay, so then what, then the I stuff? put. Okay, so then I put the the mild salsa, mm. and then the green salsa, mm. sour cream, cheese, guacamole, lettuce. Wow, I'm you just made me so fucking hungry just now. I know it was pretty good. It was like was it a my first like. Oh, it was like my first real meal in like three days because I was on like a road trip. In, uh, where, where I was did, on a road trip. Road trip to? Uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas. How was that? It was underwhelming. Underwhelming? Um, why, why do you say underwhelming? Well, I have like this um, thing where I want to see every national park in the United States before I die. That's cool. So, yeah, so I was just like, well, I'm going to go to, like, Hot Springs National Park. And it was it was pretty lame. Like, it was probably, like, the lamest national park I've been to. Um, and then it was just, like, it was Arkansas, so all the people were weird. Like, <laughs> Did you, like, did you I don't meet know. any weird people? Oh, my God, yeah. Like, I was driving back. Um, I live in Tennessee, and I was driving back. And I was just on this, like, flat stretch of highway in the middle of nowhere, Arkansas. And I pulled over to a Love's truck stop, okay? Like, because those are usually really safe. Like, I don't want to go to, like, Bob's gas station in the middle of Arkansas. Because I'm, like, a girl traveling by myself. You know, I don't want to get stabbed or, you know, anything. So then I go into this Love's truck stop. And there's this lady in the bathroom who just starts, like, telling me about how she like lost 200 pounds by like accepting Jesus and taking a bunch of like Dolcolax, which is like a laxative. 
And then, like, she followed me around the truck stop, like, showing me before and after pictures of her weight loss. And it was, like, it was, like, freaking me out. Like, I, like, went back to my car and was, like, what the fuck? Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it did was, you get her, uh, like, it was per- Did you get her phone number afterwards? No, I didn't want any communication with her afterwards. Like, it was weird because she, like, approached me in the bathroom and was, like, telling me about, like, Jesus. I'm like, okay, well, this is, like, Arkansas, so I can expect that. And then she started telling me about, like, weight loss. And I was trying to, like, leave the bathroom, but she kept on, like, you know, saying, like, but wait. And then, then as I, like, walked out and I was, like, looking at the drinks... She like how, came up behind me. How exactly did she lose weight with Jesus? I mean, two hundred pounds. No, I didn't know she, Jesus was she, that strong. No, it wasn't Jesus. It was the Dolcalax, which is like a laxative. Oh. Basically, every after-school special in like the '90s said like, "Don't lose weight with laxatives," and that's exactly what this woman did. Like, well, she, she said laxatives just, like, and Jesus. And Jesus, I think like Jesus gave her. The inspiration for the laxatives, or maybe the, okay, so the persistence she, to take them. I have no clue. I, I she really didn't lose weight know. from the la- she didn't lose weight from from Jesus and the laxatives. She lost weight from the laxatives, but it was Jesus's idea. I mean, she told me her doctor told her to do it, so maybe like Jesus like got her through it because I'm assuming if you're taking a bunch of laxatives, that's just going to be god awful. <sighs> Okay, her doctor told her to take a bunch of laxatives. It g- gave her a lot of physical pain, and she was able to bear the physical pain because she had uh, the aid of Jesus. I am assuming. I mean, that's how I. What it are you? Do you? You didn't get her phone number, her Snapchat. No, 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 no. God, no. Okay, because I, I kind of want to ask her these questions. See, I was just, like, more, I don't know, I don't, like, in the moment, like, looking back, I probably should have said, like, something like that, you know, got some kind of contact information, just, like, like, what the hell, but in the moment, I was just, like, what, like, I just didn't, I didn't know how to react to that, to be honest. Wow, I'm I, I'm very amazed that I, I somehow convinced you in, like, I've somehow convinced you in your sort of I've somehow been able to have you revise your history of this situation from that girl, that lady was weird to, you know, maybe I should have gotten her phone number. No, I mean, she's still weird. That's the arc. That, that's the arc of this call is, uh, you know, you've recontextualized the, the, the situation. Uh, and, and, and maybe now instead of um, disgust, you, you maybe feel a sense of regret um, I'd say no, because, I mean, things work out the way they work out. You shouldn't really regret shit. I try not to regret stuff. Damn, so this wasn't an arc. No, I don't think it was. What did you say your name was? What? Oh, my name you- is Rosie. Well, thank you so much for sharing the story with us, Rosie. It was my pleasure. You have a wonderful rest of the night. Thanks, Gek. You too. Bye. Yeah! I think it was an arc. No, you know what? It was an arc. It was an arc. Because it, when she said, when she said, when she initially said, in, in our conversation just now, when she said, you know, maybe I should, maybe thinking back on it, I should have gotten her number. She was being genuine. She was being genuine. She was not being funny. She was being genuine. She was being genuine. And then I brought it up that she was being genuine and she took it back. But she only took it back because I brought it up. That was an arc. Call from Matthew. Matthew. Hello. Hey. How you doing? I'm a gecko on the computer. That sounds like a life, man. It's nice. I'm enjoying it right now. Well, I've been and enjoying watching you. Present moment is really all we have. Exactly. We got to live 
in the now because that's all we that's all that exists. You know, I mean, even living, people could say, you know, okay, well, you can count on the past even more than the present, maybe because the past already happened. But I, I think, you know, whenever I look at the past, I, I can never look at it with the emotions that I actually had at the time. You always look at it as, you know, more fondly than maybe it actually was. So I can't trust the past, but I can always trust the present because it's right there. You can always trust what's right in front of you. I mean, the brain lies to us about our memories anyway. We always misremember them. And every time you remember them, you're remembering a remembrance of remembering it. Hey, what's in front of you right now? My dog. What kind of dog? Uh, I don't really know the breed. He's just like a tiny little rat dog. He weighs like 10 pounds. He's a good him? one, though. Oh, yeah. What do you love about him? Uh, He always gets excited when you come home. Does that feel nice, having someone to get excited for you? For your presence? Oh, yeah. Dogs, cats, just like... They're very grateful for your existence. You can see it when they look at you. It's easy to love animals because they're pure. You know, they're not like Machiavellian or anything. They're not. They don't, they'll, they'll never trick you. They have no ulterior motives. You know, they exactly. don't think. They don't. They're not conditioned by the outside world. They just know the here and now. That's all they focus on. Matthew. Yeah. What are thoughts? What are thoughts? Um, thoughts can be akin to spells. Like you have a thought and then suddenly you're compelled to do something. It's kind of like words too. Words are spells. Like I could, I could describe a purple penguin wearing aviator shades and suddenly somebody who hears me say that is imagining that. Like I just mm. cast a spell on them. Yes. If I start describing a dog riding a skateboard... And whoever's listening to it pictures a dog riding a skateboard. They are under my spell. I've cast a spell on their brain. 100%. I mean, the brain's just a computer, so you could write code. You could look at it that way, too. Hmm. So, like, if I... So, okay, for the dog on the skateboard thing, if I start talking about a dog on a skateboard, uh, uh, and then someone imagines it in their brain, I've, I've, co I've written code that is programmed into their brain. That's probably not right. Well, you've spoken a code that's been programmed into their brain. It's kind of like, yes. you know, like being conditioned by the world around you. If you walk around every day thinking that, oh, this world's shit, I'm shit, this is shit, then everything you see is going to be shit. But if you walk around being like, this is full of love, that's full of life, you're going to witness it a lot more. And you're programming your brain to see the good, not the bad. To anyone listening to this. If you have ever had a thought, or if you have the capacity to have thoughts, or if you have the capacity to speak words, that makes you a wizard. 100%. Thank you for having this conversation with me, Matthew. You have a wonderful rest of the night. You do the same. Call from... Kevin. Kevin! Wow, no way. Oh, it wasn't – by the way, real quick, the, the caller who I said who, whose name was uh, – not the caller. The Reddit commentator whose name I said was Caitlin Has Cats. Incorrect. Her name was actually Caitlin Has Rabbits. Was it that important? Not really. But I said it. Indeed. What do you think about that? Uh, you know, I totally forgot about anything you said on Reddit chat because I hang out on the Twitch chat. But uh... – Oh yeah, that's clarification, fair. man. I think that's fair. You know what? An important. You know what I learned is an important um, part of interacting with other people. I believe is you, mm -hmm. you have to be able to. You have to be able to slide in, and this is like an advanced conversational skill that I, I, I'm, I'm trying to get better at myself. Is sliding into other people's contexts, mm -hmm. even when you have nothing to do with them or you don't understand them. Like just now, me talking about this stupid Reddit thing that you don't—you have no idea what I'm, I'm fucking talking about. If mm. you found a way to like, you know, get like get into my context, like you know, like oh, what Reddit thing, or like you know, oh, really? Like I, I, I don't know. Whatever you could do to get yourself in there, even though you don't have um, a personal investment in it. Yes, even though you don't have a personal investment, or you don't even know what's going on. You put yourself in there. I was once in a group of 
people. I was in a group of four people, and two people of the four were talking about um, memories from their high school because the two people went to high school. Mm. And then the third person, not me, was doing a really good job at being a part of these two high of this high school conversation, even though she had no idea what the hell they were talking about. I was amazed. I can't recreate it for you. That is definitely no, no, no. I, I feel that that's an impressive skill to be able to jump into, as you said, like a foreign context and like mm-hmm, just be mm-hmm. able to conversationally operate in there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, it, it is. It's, it's, it's exactly. It's a skill, and I've, I'm not very good at it. I've seen people who are very good at it, and you know, you did it really well just now. You yes anded me. I could tell that you were paying attention to what I was saying. I could tell that you. I feel validated. I'm more. I'm now more inclined. To want to talk more to you because uh, because you 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 ex- you showed that you understood what I was trying to say and what I was trying to say it was hard for me to to to, to put because it was I, you know but anyway I know I feel you I really think conversation is really just like a series of yes anding each other like in just some weird long string of a uh, string of shit you know like i feel like some of the best times i've had like making new friends is just having a couple drinks and just spiraling down a rabbit hole of the yes ending uh, conversation over you know of course of a couple hours it's great absolutely i love the yes yes you know life is improv and when you're not yes anding each other, what do you do? You're just, just uh, two people. Uh, there's nothing sadder than two people having their own conversation with each other, mm-hmm. not yeah. building off yep. and just saying, waiting their turn to say the thing that they're gonna say. Exactly, and it's funny. Like, well, I'm actually doing that precise thing right now. But I mean, hey, calling into a show, Therapy Gecko. I uh, I study psychology and. Like many people who do study psychology in university, we've gone through a lot of therapy and all that. But, uh, you know, active listening, really, you know, not just like waiting your turn to speak, but like truly uh, listening to what someone's saying and like digesting that information, super important. You know, it's difficult because why do people, because people are afraid that when the cue comes up for them, to begin talking when the person they're listening to is done talking there's a cue for them to start talking and they're so afraid of that cue that they're preparing what they're going to say and they while they're busy preparing they they miss out on exactly. what the person actually is saying but then i find i find if i just focus on what the other person is saying then by the time that cue comes up i'm prepared because i have the information i need to prepare exactly i didn't even need yeah, to prepare. i'm prepared just... by listening you're following along for the ride and all you got to do is it's like, fuck, I don't know. It's like a good game of like ping pong or tennis or some shit. I don't know. I don't do sports or anything athletic, but mm-hmm. like, you know, if you're just, if you just assume it's going to be one place, like you're going to be wrong. You just got to follow where it's going, man. Ooh, I like that. I like that analogy, right? Like if you're, if you're fucking playing tennis and you're like, all right, the ball is go. I'm going to prepare for the ball to be over here. I'm not going to move. I'm going to stand right here because this is where I believe the ball. You're going to miss the fucking ball. Yeah. 99 times out of 100, you're going to be wrong. That's why you got to engage in the th- it's a back and forth thing. I like that analogy. 100%. That's, a good, that's a good thing to think about. So you're a therapist? No, no, no. I'm not a therapist. I am a... I guess you could say aspiring therapist. I'm an undergrad uh, student studying psychology. Well, listen, good luck with that. I hope that uh, you become a – I don't know what you can do with a psychology degree, but whatever it, whatever the best possible thing that you can do with that, I hope you do. You can get – you know, with, a, with an undergrad – psychology like a bachelor's in psychology you can basically get a master's or a phd so (laughs) that's my plan right now you know what hey when i eventually you know when i do it and i am a real actual therapist i'm gonna i'm gonna have like a gecko costume maybe or like maybe even just a little decorative gecko in my in my room it's gonna be great you know i like you i endorse you and i give you permission to steal my idea (laughs) 
Thank you much, good Sir Deck. You will be uh, you you will be a, a great asset to my future. Absolutely. You have a rest. Of, you have a, absolutely. You have a wonderful rest of the night, my friend. It was well, sir. Call from Kalo. Kalo. Hello. Hello, Kalo. How are you? Um. Uh, going fine. Could be better, but how about yourself? All right. So you say it could be going better. Uh, uh, Kalo, real quick, forget the life that you currently have. Okay. Are you forgotten? Yeah. If you could, from scratch, design your perfect life. Nothing is off limits to you. Even fantastical elements. Right, like you could own a dragon if you really wanted to. What would your ideal life look like? Um, in terms of just for myself or just for like the entire world? Mm. So interesting when, when you know... Well, let me ask you that right now. Is, is your life, you know, when you say it could be better and indicates that some things are bad, when you think of the things that are bad in your life, are they things that are bad about the world or things that are bad about your life in particular? Um, I think in the world, or overall, things are bad, and, and that's not going to change, but I'm thinking bad kind of currently right now, not in an overall sense. In an overall sense, things are are all right. What is your... Well, you know, I actually... Maybe maybe, maybe we'll hear both. What, well, let's start. Let's start with your personal life um, in terms of the best it possibly could be. In your imagination? Um, in my personal life right now, what would be the best thing that I could think of? Um, what I would prefer the most is not living where I currently am. More because I live in like a spread out kind of city area in Florida. And I kind of prefer like closed in like cities kind of. Mm. Areas where it's easy to walk around. Best way to mm, describe like it. New York, Philadelphia, Boston. Philadelphia, yeah, definitely. It's a good city. Somewhere around there. Shout out to Philadelphia. Okay, so you're living in Philadelphia. Okay. And the best thing I could say in that situation would be living with myself and preferably an animal. Um, I don't know about living with anybody else, but definitely with some kind of animal, maybe one that I have now and having a decently sustainable job and just living not overly like expensive, like buying extravagant, dumb things, just living comfortably enough where I can get by kind of. Wow. I gave you the option of literally anything. I, I included even fantastical elements. I told you that you could own a dragon. And you, you want like a dog or something? And by the way, I don't think it's a bad thing. I actually think it's a fantastic thing. Because if you had told me, yeah, I want to live in Narnia and own a pet dragon, I would have actually gotten a little sad for you. Because that's impossible. You can never have a pet dragon. Dragons aren't real. Narnia isn't real. But I'm actually happy for you that your dreams seem wildly achievable i kind of like to dream like in a in an achievable way sort of i, I think that's very smart. I, I know a lot of yeah i kind of yeah there are big aspirations like big wild dreams like going to space or you know skydiving with like mike tyson or something like that that i wish i could do but the achievable things just like you know philadelphia something like that small place to live in that'd be nice what's stopping you from getting there um myself honestly i can't really think of a feasible explanation other than myself you want to live in philadelphia and live with an animal you said the animal you have now what animal do you have now um i currently have three dogs right now um three dogs yeah, a really old one, old pug, uh, pug beagle mix named Bingo. I have a younger one, Australian shep shepherd named Zach, and a much younger one named Diesel. He's kind of like a pit bull. 
Jack, Diesel, and Bingo. Zach. Z. Zach. Zach, Diesel, and Bingo. Yep. Hilarious names. Oh, it was mostly my dad who thought of Bingo, and the other two were just kind of there. Like that, those are like 1930s silent film names. <laughs> Except Zach. Zach is modern, but Zach, Diesel, and Bingo? There's That's actually so a little bit of a interesting story behind how we got Zach, if if you care to hear about it. Yeah, what's up? Um, so, so I was living with my dad, and I'm, I was still living with my dad, and you know he was just dating around girls and stuff. And met this one girl and, you know, tried to live with her a little bit in the apartment that we were living in. It was just me and him. And, you know, kind of took over my space a little bit. And she brought the dog, too, and her little kid. So after a while, she turned out to be not so great of a person and ended up just taking all of her stuff and leaving. And at first we thought she took, like, everything, like the dog and everything. And... Out of nowhere, my dad gets a call from the apartment complex that we we're living at saying that, you know, your dog is loose. And he's thinking, you know, bingo, the only dog that we had, he's thinking he's out. So they take him back or he goes back to the office and picks up the dog. And it's Zach. And he just like walked home because I guess she just let him go and just kind of just let him go wherever. And so he came back to us and we kept him. That's very nice. Yeah. What did you say your name was? Kalo. K-A-Y-L-O. Kalo, I appreciate you sharing what you shared with us this evening, and I wish you the best of luck on achieving your dreams of living in Philadelphia with your dogs, and I believe that it will happen for you someday. Maybe you Thank you very much, and I wish all the chat and all you guys, everyone watching, I you know, wish them all good as well. And I want to shout out a couple of people in my life, if they're ever listening or not. I want to shout out my dad for being there for me. I want to shout out my older brother, Brandon, for, you know, same reason, being my best friend. My friend Chris, my friend April, and my friend Drake. All all of them, I just want to give love to everybody, and I hope this is a good call. Absolutely. You have a good rest of the night. You too, guys. Have a good night. Listen, all right. The only problem I have with that is that, look, I, I know this guy. I know that guy. I don't even know that guy. He only gave me, what, seven minutes of his time? I don't know April or Drake. I, I, I can't personally endorse them. That's the, that's, that's the only problem I have is I, I can't personally endorse April or Drake. I don't know anything about them. I just, the, look, the opinion, because, like, what, I, you know, I don't want to, look, if April does something bad, I don't want to, I don't want to go down with her because she was shouted out on my stream. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want it to look like an endorsement of April. No, no offense, to April. I don't think there's anything wrong with April. I don't know. I literally don't know anything about April. But the only thing I, the, 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 only, the other thing I feel uneasy about is you know, being so heavily associated with April and Drake, and not knowing anything about them. Like, what am I getting into? What am I? You know, what's really being shouted out here? It, it, it's it's the blindness. All from Dalen. Jalen? Uh, Jalen, with a D. Da Dalen. Yes. <laughs> Hi. How are you, Dalen? <laughs> I am good. How are you doing? I'm a gecko on the computer. <laughs> Fair enough. I've, so I'm, try I'm trying that out as like a thing that like, I, and, I, and I've, I had only said it once before I said it to you just now, and now I've said it twice. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw that bit, so it's kind of like a like a persona now. I'm trying it out as a reoccurring answer to that question. Fair enough. But I've It'll never liked like that. I've never really liked answer. catchphrases. I mean, I've, I've had catchphrases, but I never liked having any sort of eternal catchphrase. Okay. Okay, so then you don't have, like, any particular word that you use a lot or, like, just even, like, a catchphrase that you use a lot? Not like consistently. I don't think I've had any sort of catchphrases or speech quirks that have lasted for any longer than a year, maybe. Hmm. 
I want you to think back before I interrupted you to start talking about myself. You had a thing that you were going to say, and I want to hear what that was. Oh, thank you. Um, I actually, I'm just curious. What, what on earth made you decide that this was something that you were going to start doing? Dalen, I have a question for you. Yes. What are thoughts? Um, thoughts, uh... I think it's kind of a pattern of how you have learned growing up. The way you think is kind of programmed through your life, through other experiences. So like everybody will picture things very, very differently depending on how they were raised, experiences they've had growing up. So it's kind of a broad question that will fit each person very, very differently. Let me ask you, Dalen, is there anything that may have happened to you in the past? Anything, you know, that maybe is in, maybe anything that's present in your environment right now? Let's talk, let's, let's, let's focus on the present. Is there anything in your present environment that you think regularly affects your thoughts? Um, in the present, I'll, in the present, honestly, it's mainly me tra- like trying to just rewrite my thoughts and how mm. I was raised. Mm. So, like a lot of my inner thoughts, um, like the first thought that sometimes comes to mind would be somebody in my past who, like for instance, was negative, and then me going, "No, no, no, mm. let's not think like that." And then rewiring to go a different direction. You know what I like about this, Dalen, is 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 Dalen, right? Yes. Yes. You know what I like about this, Dalen, is that when I asked you, you know, what is it in your environment that is in you know persistently influencing your thoughts? Your answer was you. It it is. It's me. <laughs> and I think I think that's a good um, it's a good metric. That's a good goal. It's a good thing to reach. It's a good habit to practice. It I is. Wish you the best it, of luck. Well, thank you. Of course. Thank you very much. Night, Dale. It was a pleasure talking you to you. You too. Bye bye. Call from Grace. 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 Hello. Hey. Hello? Hi. Hello? (laughs) Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I turned the stream off. It was being weird. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm a gecko. You're a gecko, I see that. I Venmoed you earlier. Oh, you Venmoed me? I did. <laughs> Thank you. Jeez, I appreciate that. Six, six, $6.9, and my caption was uh, for bellies out on tonight's stream. Holy <laughs> gecko, holy dude, damn. $6.9? I can buy like I can I can actually probably buy a full fucking thing of Tyson's chicken tenders. For that. That's amazing. I appreciate that very much. Anytime. I called you probably um, seven hundred times tonight with have my we brother. Spoke, have, and wait, Grace, have we ever spoken before? No, we have not. But I have. Oh, why didn't you? Times. Why didn't you say so, Grace? Hello. <laughs> What's up? How you doing? What? Where? 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 Where do your parents live? Are you close with them? Am I close? Um. Yeah, we're from Chicago area. Um. And my brother found you on TikTok and was mm. like, "Check out this guy." Um. And I was like, "That guy's pretty cool." So then we started watching your stream every night that they're on. <laughs> And uh, so, all right. So, is he 
with you? Is he still watch the stream or is he over it? He just got sick of me. No, we watch it every single time it's on together. Like all of us. All like wait, who's all of us? Is it, it's you, your brother? Is that it? And and then my brother's girlfriend, and then occasionally our friend Jake. Are they all? Are, are all you guys here right now? Um, me, Alex, my brother, and Mackenzie. We're all here together. Wow. Yeah, uh, the whole crowd. Damn. I, 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 which which of these people are you closest with? Um, my brother, Alex. Hmm, I guess that makes sense. That you're closer with your brother than your brother's girlfriend. And who's the other? Who's the fourth person? Um, Jake. He's Alex's friend. Oh, well, the fucking Jake's just over there. Let me. Can I speak to Jake? <laughs> He's not here right now. Only Alex is my brother. Okay, so it is just you only, it's, it's just you two tonight. And his girlfriend. <laughs> hmm. Well, you know what? Listen, he, he wants I, to say hi. Who am I on with? Am I with? Is it Grace still, or is it with Grace's friend's boyfriend's cousin's dog? It's Grace. Grace, but Alex wants to say hi. Oh, oh, oh sure, sure, sure. I would, yeah. I would, I would love to speak with Alex. I would, I would be honored to speak with Alex. Am I speaking with Alex right now, or is it still Grace? This, this is Alex. How are you doing? How Alex? you doing? It's good to speak. It's good oh, to I'm hear doing, from you. I'm doing great, brother. How are you doing? I'm doing. Well as well. I am a gecko on the computer. I heard that, uh, well, uh, uh, would you describe to me your relationship with your sister? Oh, man. <laughs> um, it's pretty, pretty comical. I'd say it's a pretty, pretty comedic relationship. What is uh, comedic about it? Oh, my lord, what is it? Well... <laughs> Um, we can start with her crazy dog. That's probably a good starting point. And, well, okay, so is your relationship with Grace's dog a sort of separate relationship, or is it merely, or is your relationship with Grace's dog an extension of your relationship with Grace? Oh, I'd say it's definitely an extension. Okay, so you don't have sort of your own opinion of your relationship with uh, the dog. You Correct. see the dog is attached to Grace. So your it, interactions with Grace's dog are reflective of Grace in your eyes. Yes. Yes. Okay. And why are these interactions comical? Um, well, for example, we have a mattress in the basement where I keep my axolotls. And on this mattress... Wait, you keep your axolotls uh, on a mattress? No, no, no. They're by the mattress. Oh, okay. Yes. So... Uh, he took a shit down there, and uh, we all had to examine this shit to figure out which dog it came from. Of, of course. So she decided to try and blame it on another one of our dogs. Is that an Rottweiler. excuse that you just merely want to look at dog shit? And you use that as like a reason why you could? What is this what we're talking about? It's a possibility. Because I, 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 the reason why I don't believe that is because how uh, how long do you have to stare at a shit to know what which dog it came from? If if that is even something you could tell. Well, personally, do you think it's really easy to tell? Like, could you look at a piece of dog shit and tell me what dog it came from? Nope. That's what I mean. It, it takes some examination to figure out what dog it could have came from. No, but I couldn't even do it after any amount of examination. Oh, well, the, the three dogs are pretty uh, significant difference in sizes between the three of them. Oh, so you're sort of judging based on the size of the shit which dog it came out of. Exactly. Mm, okay. Uh, but look, I want to stay focused on your relationship with your sister. You know, enough about the dogs. <laughs> okay. What, what is it about your relationship with your sister specifically that is comical? Um... I'd say just probably the way we get through a lot of the things that we have gotten through as siblings is uh, through comedy. Mm. Can I get an example of something? Um, well, oh, geez. Well, just today, her and her boyfriend have been going through some rough times. 
So the family decided to, uh, you know, have her down for a little family dinner and just crack jokes and just try and get her to smile. But just random things like that. That sounds very sweet. Anything to get her to smile, you know. Hey, Alex. Yeah. Can I speak with Grace real quick? Of course. Hey, Gag. Grace, so how would you describe your relationship with your brother? Um, comforting. Mm. You guys seem like you have a very nice relationship. You seem like you both love each other very much. Care about each other's well. Yeah, we have been best friends since I was born. Um, although, <laughs> although he's, uh, we've gotten in some physical altercations. Mm. <laughs> like, fun fact, Punch I have a kicking. super hard head. You have a super, super hard, hard head. head. It do is you, hard. Do you, uh, <laughs> now, your hard head, is that something you utilize defensively or offensively? Definitely defensively. Um, like when we would get in fights as a kid, he would like try and draw spit over my face. And when he would draw it back in, I would just clock him with my head and run away. That's an off- That's the offensively. Well, I guess it is... Defense. I, 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 no, I guess that is defensive. It's self defense. Right, right. It's offense I would in never. Self defense. Right. I would never st- start the altercations. I would just have to defend myself, you know? Hmm. Well, Grace, um. Do you guys. You guys don't currently get into that many physical altercations, do you? No, we're, we're too old now. And he's, he has had like seven concussions, so I can't hurt his little head. How many of those seven concussions were your fault? Absolutely none. He plays rugby, and he played oh. uh, football, so he got them all from there. All right, so you could just kind of beat the shit out of him, and he wouldn't even feel it. Right, yeah, because like, I feel like at some point the concussions just start like leveling out with how many brain cells you can lose, and I feel like he's mm. pretty much tapped out. So. Mm. Well, be careful around him, all right? Don't roughhouse too much. Okay, I'll try. Grace, it was a pleasure talking to you. It was a pleasure talking to Alex as well. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching the stream. And, um, you know, I hope to, that you all are members of Geck Nation for many years to come. Oh, we will be. Enjoy your Venmo. Thank you very much, Grace. You have a good night. You too. Bye. Therapy goes on.